In this video I want to show you how I made my MIDI keyboard for a live performance shown in the video below. Please watch this video first to understand what I'm talking about. Open your Ableton project that you want to perform live with your MIDI keyboard. First we start with a small filter effect on the drum track. Drag and drop the auto filter effect on the drum track. Now change the filter mode from low pass to high pass. The first parameter we want to map is the frequency. Enter the MIDI mode by clicking the small MIDI icon on the top right corner. Now select the frequency bar and turn the knob you want to use. Also select the effect on and off button and turn the same knob again. Now select the on and off button from the MIDI editor and change the minimum amount to 1. Now we can change the maximum frequency amount. I like to set this to 3 kHz. If you like you can exit the MIDI mode now and check the mapping. Great about this mapping is, if you turn down the controller knob, the effect turns off and this saves resources. Now enter the MIDI mode again and click on the small up arrow down here. Now enter the CC mode on your archive and hit the pad you want to use. Now select the down arrow and hit the pad you want to use. We also do this for the play and stop button. Now you can select scenes with your controller and start and stop them. In this step I show you how you can control plugin parameters with your keyboard. Click on the small tool here to open your plugin. Now we need to configure the knob you want to use. Click on this small icon here and then on Configure. Turn around the knob you want to use and exit the Configure mode. Now we can close the plugin window again. Like in the steps before, we need to MIDI map this. Enter the MIDI mode, click on the parameter you want to use and turn the knob on your controller. Exit the MIDI mode and test your mapping. In my case, I mapped a cutoff filter. In this step I show you how to configure the live input. To do this you need to open Ableton's input output interface. Click on the small IO icon here and change the monitoring from auto to in. Also select your controller from the MIDI from tab. Now you can play your keyboard no matter which track is selected. But don't forget to press the record arm when you want to record your live performance. Now I'll show you how I build gate effects. First make a new MIDI track. For a better recognition rename this track. In this case I use Stutter Edit by Isotope. But this will work for many effect plugins too. Drag and drop your plugin on the master track. Now go back to your MIDI track and select your plugin from the MIDI 2 panel. Most plugins give you the option to select different channels, but channel 1 should work. Click on the record arm and disable the live input track. Now you can trigger some effects with your fingers. When you found some effects that you like, create a new clip and go down to the piano roll. Now search for the key that you played on your keyboard. Paint the key in the piano roll by double clicking or pressing B on your computer keyboard and change the launch mode by clicking on the small L in the lower left. There are four different options, but in this case I want to use the gate mode. Now the clip is only played when you hold down the play button. If you like you can change the type of quantization. Choose none if you want to instantly start the clip by pressing. Repeat this step with different notes to create more effects for your pads. After you're done, go back in your MIDI mode and click on the first clip. Now hit the pad you want to use. Do this for your other effect clips too. Now you have the possibility to play effects with your pads. 
Now I show you how to create a panorama and stutter effect. Drag and drop the auto pan effect on the master track. Now turn up the amount to 100%. Change the rate mode from Hertz to Sync mode. Choose the rate you like to use. Play around with the shape parameter to get a panorama effect with harder cuts. If you are not satisfied with the result, play around with the rate parameter again. Now drag a second auto pan effect on the master track. Turn up the mount parameter to 100% again. And also change the rate mode to sync mode again. And select the rate you want to use. Instead of 50%, turn up the shape parameter to 100%. Turn the face all the way down to 0 degrees and change the offset to 200 degrees. Also change the effect from sine wave to saw wave. You can do this by clicking on the saw icon in the lower corner of the effect. Now it's time to test the stutter effect. Go back in the MIDI mode to map these both effects. Just click on the amount parameter and press the pad you want to use. Now I want to show you a small effect rack that I built in Ableton and use very often for my live performances. A download link for this rack is below the video. Now I choose some effects that I want to use with my controller. After you know which effects you want to use, go back in the MIDI mode and select the parameters you want to map. Then turn the knob you want to use. Do this for the other controls too. You also can double map knobs to combine effects. If you make a mistake, you can delete the mapping from the list in the left. After you are done with your mapping, you can exit the MIDI mode. That's about it. I hope I could help you with this small mapping tutorial. If you have any questions, write a comment below.